Let me read to you a passage from the 17th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 11 to 19. It's the Gospel for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. St. Luke writes, As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he travelled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give glory to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. That's from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. What does it suggest to us? Well, of course, it speaks of thanks and praise. You know, our Lord strongly encourages us to ask and says that if we do, we shall receive. Somewhere among his many works, St. Alphonsus Liguri writes that the main reason why people do not receive from God much more than they actually get is that they ask for so little. He goes on to write that if we do not bother to ask God for the things that we really need, such as his spiritual gifts and graces, our salvation is at risk. So we should ask God for what we need, just as a child would and should ask his father for what he needs. In fact, it pleases God when we ask him, if we ask him with confidence and persistence for what in his sight we think we need. As a wonderful father, he loves to hear our prayers, and he loves to answer them in the way he knows is truly best for us. Consider the passage I read just a minute ago, in which our Lord cures the lepers from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. The lepers stood a long way off, asking our Lord to have pity on them. It was a prayer of petition to Jesus, heartfelt and full of faith, knowing he could answer their plea. And forthwith, Jesus granted their request, and their healing soon followed. It is a typical example of the power of the prayer of petition in the Gospels. The prayer of petition. But then, only one of the ten lepers, and he not of the Jewish faith but a Samaritan, returned praising God and falling at the feet of Jesus to thank him. As we heard, this made Jesus say, We're not all ten made clean. The other nine, where are they? It seems that no one has come back to give praise to God, except this foreigner. Our Lord expected a response of thanks and praise from each of them. Now this shows that the prayer of thanks for blessings received is pleasing to him, together with praise for all that he is, so good, so loving, so holy. Just as every event and need can be the occasion of humbly asking God for something, so every event and need can be the reason for thanking him and praising him. The saints thanked him for their very sufferings, knowing that whatever he allows is for our good. St. Paul tells us to, and I quote, to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We are to give thanks in all circumstances. He says it again elsewhere, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. 
Now all the masters of the spiritual life lay it down that humility is the foundation thereof. It is therefore imperative that we grow in the virtue of humility if we wish to be truly religious, let alone a sincere disciple of Jesus Christ. How are we to become humble, though? What's the key to humility? Well, an important means is to take concrete steps to grow in the spirit of gratitude, trying, as St. Paul enjoins, to be constantly thankful to God for everything. The greatest prayer of thanksgiving is the Mass, at which we join with our Lord in the thanks He offers to the Father on our behalf. The meaning of the word Eucharist is precisely thanksgiving. As we think of the leper returning to our Lord and falling at his feet to thank him, let us resolve to fill up our life of prayer with thanksgiving, thanksgiving to God. There is also the duty and the call to praise him. Praise is the form of prayer which recognises most immediately that God is God. It praises God for his own sake and gives him glory, quite beyond what he has done for us, but simply because he is what he is. He is God, and for this we praise him and give him glory. When the leper returned to fall at the feet of our Lord and to thank him, our Lord's complaint was that he was the only one to come back to give glory to God. To give glory to God. Our Lord wanted to see his heavenly Father praised for the lepers had received. So we ought not only thank God but praise him. Of course, if we thank God a lot, we are disposing ourselves to praise him. And in praising God we are most united to those in heaven for that is what they especially do. Heaven is filled with the praise of God, as it is with intercession on our behalf. Praise of God reaches its summit in adoration for Him. When we adore God, we are especially praising Him. How then can we grow in the ability to praise God? Our ability to praise God will grow in the measure that we are able to praise at all. Just as we could ask ourselves how often we thank others, we could also ask ourselves how often we praise them. If we learn to praise others and make it a habit, we shall grow in the ability to praise God. Because it's a very unselfish thing to do. We ought to strive to become people who are very reluctant to criticise others and prone to praise them. A person who praises a lot helps those being praised and also develops his own capacity to praise God. Let us often give glory and praise to God in our prayer while also praising others and being reluctant to criticise them. At Mass we praise God in union with our Lord. Let us resolve not only to ask God for all we need, we must do this daily, but also resolve to fill our prayer and our entire life with praise and thanks. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Glory to them, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be.